so welcome back to Jokmok. This time I'm going to talk about coffee, coffee cheese and Nordic ice skating in northern Sweden. My name is Matti, I'm working as a nature guide and dogmaster together with my girlfriend Stina up in Jokmok. Let's go! We have really super good ice here on the lake today. Or actually the whole week have been really, really good ice. And it looks like it will continue like this for another two weeks. But as you see, the sun is just above the horizon, almost. And Today I have Annie and Johnny with me. They are super crazy ones. They're running around and barking. And they don't want to run fast on the ice, so they run a little bit slowly on the ice. So now I'm walking between two lakes and I follow a trail that we use during the winter. If I compare ice skating with hiking, hiking is uh, so slow, ice skating is like flying. If, if the ice, you can have two different kind of good ice. One type of good ice is when the ice is good because it's strong and you don't need to be scared to falling into the water. That's good ice. The other type of good ice is when the ice is totally black and a little bit thin layer of water maybe on the ice and you can see the bottom. Then it's a nice ice skating experience. Uh, it's like flying, but it could also be a wet experience. Uh, I think I prefer this type of safe ice instead of flying ice. The best is of course if you have both at the same time. But yeah, yeah. Soon I'm on the next lake. Ya 
الإنسان وفيها الفتن فيها الخزلان وفيها الندم قريب الناس وفيها الألم الدنيا الدنيا الشقا وفيها الدنيا بالله يا رفيق I forgot my jacket. This jacket, super light and so good. And the brand is, I write the brand here. I will make a review of this. I really love this jacket. I had to go and get some really good piece of this fat wood. I talked about this fat wood in an earlier video. As you maybe remember. I need to go and get some water. When you travel on frozen water, you should always be careful. And I am very careful. But right now I'm alone and that's rule one. Don't be alone. I live in close to this lake. So I've been here already and I know other people who have been around this lake already. So right now I know how the weather have been during the last days and I know that the ice was safe a couple of days ago and the temperature have continued to be low so the ice have been frozen uh, the ice have been growing during that time so that's the reason why i do this alone today and i'm really afraid of falling into the water actually so as i said i'm one of the most afraid guides in northern sweden maybe in scandinavia actually <laughs> another thing that a lot of people ask about is this. Uh, uh, I wear this. You should always wear this if you do ice skating. This is not, of course, if you are indoors and make ice hockey playing, then you don't need this one. But otherwise, if you do ice skating, I have them around my neck. And if I crash into the water, uh, it's like a small uh, handle with a small uh, spike here, very sharp. So then, you know, if you're laying in the water, you are low and you will have the ice here. And to come up back on the ice, it's very difficult because the ice will be wet and very slippery. If you have this once, you can push it into the ice and pull yourself up. And if you crash into the water, you should pull yourself up and crawling for a while like this, not standing up because then you're falling back in the water again, probably. So this is safety equipment and I also bring them with me and when we do dog sled tours or snowmobile tours and so on, if we don't, if there is any small risk that you go through the ice, this is good. In Sweden, we call them Ice dubbar. I can put a link down in the description to some of them. On my shoes, the kind of shoe I use, uh, I have a ski boot like this, 
and this one is made for skating with skis. So I have extra hard plastic stabilization around my ankle here. And that make it much more stable to standing on the skates. The skates I use looks like this. And I connect my foot here, my ski boot. And on this one, my heel is free. So this is uh, free heel ice skating. You have also the ice skates when the heel is locked to the skate. I prefer this, they are faster and um, for me, I already have my ski boots, so for me, it was, this was what I wanted. Some people who just have hiking boots, then you can use these skates with fixed heels, because then they sometimes fit to normal hiking boots also. I also use this long one. This have a sharp thing here, and this one with a black thing. That is more heavy. And when I do ice skating on very thin ice, I take this first and I check the ice with it. Because I know if I push this through the ice, the ice is three centimeter or less. And three centimeter carry one person. So this is perfect weight, perfect for me. I, and then I get used how much I should push and I check how thick is the ice and then you learn how to check the ice. But you should not have this, no, this is not normal ski poles. This is actually a skating stick, a stick that you're checking the ice with. And then there are two. So I have one of them, or the heavy one, that I can check the ice. And I can also take them apart like this and use them as ski poles. That's very good if you're making long skate tours and you get tired, then you sometimes want ski poles, poling for a while. So, as I said, like three centimeter of the ice or two and a half to three centimeter, then you can walk on the ice. Normally, I think the recommendation is uh, seven centimeter or something for one person. <coughs> but if it's seven centimeter here, it could be much less on the other side. So it's also to have the marginals. Now the smoke from the fire comes to the camera. Today I'm going to use something that's called coffee cheese. It's almost like, a little bit like halloumish, but more sweetish, uh, white cheese-ish. Anyway, not normal cheese. And you put it in the coffee. Some people like it, like me, and some people don't like it. And I, sometimes I bring it out on tours when I'm out with guests. and. Yeah, some like it and some think I'm going to kill them. Or some people want to kill me afterwards. A little bit about the coffee. The coffee I use today is what we call boiling coffee. It is uh, beans that you have ground in smaller pieces, but not as the one that you make dripping coffee of. It's a little bit bigger pieces. And some people add it straight into the cold water and then boil it. I'll prefer to heat up the water and then add it. And maybe the coffee is better if you add it to cold water, but I add it to hot water because if you add it to cold water and you forgot the pan on the fire or something like that, like I do, forgot things, then you have a coffee explosion and the coffee will pop out of the pot. So I add it in hot water to avoid mistakes. And here, as you see, I filled up the whole uh, coffee thing with uh, cheese. And this is a, a 
a lot of memory in this wooden cup for me because I bought this when I came to Jokkmokk 1991, 92, something like that, of a man that lived part of his time a little bit outside Mudus National Park. Um, he's not alive anymore. I have some knives from him too. Really good handcrafter. And this coffee pot also has a story because uh, my father died in 2018 and when I cleaned out his house together with my sister and brother we find two of these pots and I took one and uh, uh, my brother took one and this pot as I remember my brother and my uncle get one of them each from um, their parents so I think this has been my father's coffee pot when he was young or it has been my uncle's coffee pot anyway my brother had the other one so that's lovely and you see this bend on the pipe that's good because that makes smoke not going into the coffee and if this is a classic coffee pot in northern Sweden uh, what you should do now, now I have boiled the coffee and the coffee grounds have started going down to the bottom. Some people put a clearing skin that you did back in old days, a piece of fish skin. I, I don't do that. Anyway, what I do is that I put out the first coffee like this. You put out the first coffee to the small people who live in the forest. The tiny small people. Don't ask me more about that. Anyway, I put out coffee and I very often are lucky out here. And then you put the coffee like this on top of the cheese. Top. And then you put the coffee pan back close to the fire so it stays warm. And This is not bad, not bad at all. Now the cheese will start uh, getting warm and melting a little bit. Um, right now they are still too cold, but you can eat them. And it's like eating this rubber that you take away when you have writing things and you use this rubber. It's a little bit the feeling of chewing on them. I don't know why I know that, but it's not a very strong taste of it. It's more nice feeling. Back in old days, this coffee cheese was a way of transporting milk products out here. And this is a lot of protein and fat in this. And a lot of people have the coffee cheese, they have bread, and they have dried meat. And they add coffee cheese and salted smoked dried meat into the coffee. And then they eat it together with some kind of white bread. Yeah, gakko that you make very thin, big things. Mm. And that's a good lunch. Coffee, coffee cheese, meat and bread. And everything fit into a coffee pot and into one of these. Now the sun is lower and the color starts changing, so it turns into more pinkish color. It's very, I think it will get dark quite soon. Or at least not good enough light for filming. But I had to finish the coffee. It's a shame if you're throwing away coffee. <sighs> so
So the ice skating season in northern Sweden can be everything from a couple of weeks, a month, if we're lucky. This year it seems like it will be a couple of weeks actually. It could also be nothing. Uh, because sometimes you get a very very thin ice and then you get snow straight on it. This time we get a good ice, we get some snow on it, but it melted away. And then it just continued being cold. So, so this ice that we get this year, this is saving lives. Every year I'm a little bit afraid of falling into the water when we're out on the early winter, when we're crossing lakes and checking the ice before the tours. It's, it's a risk and we are very careful of course, but it's always a risk. But this winter the ice is quite stable, so that's good. It's good for all people who are working out here with reindeers, preparing trails, guides, everything. So at least around Jokmok we have good ice. That's super good. I'm so happy. Cheers! There is really a lot of amazing ice crystals on the ice. Super big, super beautiful, and they're just growing and growing. Really beautiful. Just walking around here and looking at them. You see? Ah, I can't lift them. But anyway, it's kind of big flakes standing everywhere on the ice. Super beautiful. I want to say thank you to all Patreons, thank you for watching, it's nice to have you here and I hope this video gives something to you. If you haven't done it, please subscribe, give a thumb up, leave a comment, whatever, come to Jokmok, go ice skating. See you next video, ciao!